Hi, this is Jane Hatch, Bethesda Star, Targeted Shaman. I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't made a video in about a year. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I, uh, I've been writing a book, which I finished and I published. It was pub published by Trine Day Press. And um, this is the book. It's called The Land of Broken Crystals and the Girl Who Knew Too Much. I don't know if that's coming out backwards for you, but it is for me. Uh, but this book is basically a, my memoir uh, of my life, beginning when I was seven years old and carrying through to I was about 50, 49 and it was an extremely difficult book to, to write. Um, in fact, it is probably should have been called the, the book that could never be written. Um, it, it is an extraordinary um, dive into one of the most horrific uh, custody court cases, uh, which w involved myself and my two daughters and my ex-husband and <clears throat> many other people. And it became much, much bigger than just a custody. I was also um, a whistleblower journalist before um, the custody battle. And I, I was exposing um, corruption at um, Maine's biggest private employer, which was uh, Bath Ironworks, or attempting to. I was also doing exposés on racism and sexual has harassment. And I was very naive. I, I thought people would be grateful. And I was also talking about uh, pollution that they were spreading in Tarbox Hill and <clears throat> this chemical when they uh, grinded the ships, um, it, it spewed into the air. And um, I hope this is, this is on. And uh, it, it, it settled on all of uh, the town that the factories in, it was called um, Black Beauty. So I was right, I was a reporter and I was writing about things I probably shouldn't be, shouldn't have been writing about, but I was just really, I don't, I can't say I was too stupid, but cause I, I mean, I was, I was also writing about nuclear power and sort of participated in the shutdown because I was really supporting the activists in Maine who were trying to shut down Maine Yankee nuclear plant. But I just thought I was doing something good for the planet. And um, anyway, I, I know I am absolutely 100% certain that I got on the FBI um, um, slow kill list um, because I was a whistleblower and a journalist and also as female. And um, that's, a not, that's not a good combination if you wanna live a long life, is to be an outspoken female who speaks truth to power. But I wasn't totally aware of that. I'm not sure why, but so I just plunged ahead and I was writing report after report after report on main nuclear power plant and also Bath Ironworks for the Kennebec Journal. Well, things really started to fall apart after that. Someone shot on my front door. The president, the then president of Bath, of, um, Bath Ironworks, um, Haggett, I think his first name was Bill. Um, I did not know him very well. I had worked for him sh briefly when I was about 24 before I started working as a reporter, I was like a receptionist. I can't, for him, actually, the president. And um, he gave me a lot of attention, probably too much attention for a married man. And I, I rebuffed him. And, but I, I didn't, I was still very naive. I didn't think much of, a, much of it. And then I, I, I didn't stay there long. But um, so I didn't know him very well. So years later, when I became a reporter, um, and I interviewed him and a couple other people at Bath Ironworks, including Lyndon Noble, who was a woman who had filed a sexual harassment 
uh, case against Bath Iron Works. She was the first electrical design engineer for the for the entire company, and that was in the eighties. And she was subject to horrific sexual harassment. And I wrote an expose. I think it was even three parts. And then, unbeknownst to anyone except for a few of my close friends, I began to write a screenplay uh, based on this real story of this woman, Linda Noble. It was very dramatic, but nonetheless, it was not necessarily something that was ever, ever going to be in the public. In fact, it still really isn't. It still exists and it's done and it's an excellent screenplay. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't know how he found out about that screenplay, but it was within that screenplay that I revealed through this character, Linda Noble, who was a real person, who was an electrical design engineer, that Bath Ironworks, and this was in the 80s, uh, was using cheaper, potentially faulty um, parts. Um, and the, in the, uh, they knew it had caused an explosion at another shipyard using this exact same. And the, the screenplay wasn't even about that. It was really about this one's this one woman's story about becoming a um, the first electrical design engineer at Bath Ironworks, which in that time was completely, you know, was primarily uh, male dominated. If you were a female, you did not have a very nice life there. They hung effigies. Um, it's absolutely nothing <laughs> then. Uh, I mean, now compared to the way it was for, for women <clears throat> in these primarily male-based occupations. So that's what the screenplay was about. There was also a romance in it. There was a, a lot of uh, landscape scenes at the ocean, the beach, the woods. It, it also involves some Native American stuff. So that was sort of a minor part of the screenplay. I didn't really think too much about it. Um but anyway, one day I was no longer working at Bath Ironworks. I was at a yard sale in Bath, Maine, and the president of the company, Bill Haggett, came up to me and said, looked at me. I was surprised he was even talking to me. I'm surprised he remembered my name. He said, Jane, how is the screenplay going? Again, I was so naive. I actually thought he actually meant what he said. And I went, Oh, good. I was sort of shocked, but I'm a very friendly person. I talk to everybody and any, you know, everybody. And I, I said, good. And um, it did not even occur to me. And I don't even remember what he said, but it wasn't until years later, I realized that one comment, I know that it was Bill Haggett reporting me to the feds because Bath Ironworks contracts with uh, the Navy. And um, you don't really want to get it on the bad side of the feds, but I didn't really think about that. All I thought about was safety and human beings and the environment and, you know, all those things. And it was very, very naive. I didn't even stop to wonder why I was the only reporter in Maine doing really deep dives into environmental issues in Maine. I never questioned it. So it was years later that I remember, oh yeah, because it could have been because of the Maine nuclear uh, power plant. Um, it could have been a couple other things, but I know it was Bill Haggett and Bath Ironworks who put me on the FBI slow kill list. And it was after that, that all kinds of horrible things started happening to me and my children. And many, many people were involved, I think some very directly, some indirectly, you know, the FBI uses everybody and anything, and they even use Satanism. So um, we were catapulted into an unimaginable hell in Bain. And I know they wanted me to suicide myself. I absolutely believe they wanted to traffic my children because they were, they were beautiful, absolutely beautiful, intelligent uh, little girls. They used um, a guardian ad litem that was a, a, a groomer. She was she, she was a 
She was grooming them. There was a stepmother that was sexually grooming them. They, they were setting them up. I, and I didn't know all this at the time. I was just in deep shock and despair. And they could find no reason um, to remove my children. And on paper, they did not. But it, all of us were put under trauma-based mind control. And um, I did not know the name of it then. I knew this was not an ordinary custody battle. It was brutal beyond description for my daughters and I. And um, I had I had to write about it. Um, but I was able, because I'm a trained shaman, I was born a shaman, I have a very strong connection uh to the earth since i since i was born it's the only reason i have survived is because i found love and power and protection in the spirit world and really nowhere else in my life <clears throat> and it was because of that um i was i was able to journey through the spirit world to help them and so the there is levity in the beauty and joy of shamanism and so for that reason, and crystals and nature and God and uh, the goddess and um, Mary, Mother Mary, um, th that beauty is woven into the story because I knew it would be unreadable uh, if I didn't and almost unwritable because I I even writing needed relief. And I know I disassociated when I was writing. <laughs> and I think the, even the editor could, could barely edit it at Try and Press because it did come out with some errors um, towards the end. Some, um, uh, I think one page was duplicated and there's a couple other things. But um, so this book is getting very excellent reviews on Amazon. I haven't looked at Goodreads or um, Barnes and Noble, but people, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely overjoyed, excited, empowered, um, relieved uh, at the responses I'm getting from all around the world. There's a girl in Ireland that has it. That's just says she said something that actually made me cry she said i'm so i am so stuck to this book she said i was i i'm tired at night because i work all day and i'm a single mom with a little boy but i i read with one eye open just so i can get to the end of the chapter to make sure you're okay at the end and um just great reviews um it starts out when i'm seven years old and that's pretty light for one or two chapters uh, when my I, my mother was also taken from me, so this is um, a generational curse, and um, my daughters are breaking it. So that that's another uh, positive, and I think part of that is in in ancient techniques of shamanism, you can you you bring back the soul of children, and they're not going to be as malleable, and they're going to start fighting back, which I did on the spirit level was to return the souls because the stepmother was severely traumatizing them every single day of their life. And it's a long story and it's a complicated story. And um, I, I haven't even told all the details in the book, but um, you can purchase it through the publisher, trindaypress.com. Um, there's, you know, there's my photo on the back and a little bit of a description. Um. I, I'll read one paragraph. Jane's exceptional psychic abilities made her the target of MK Ultra mind control systems beginning in the early 1960s. Integral to breaking the mind and spirit of children is removing the loving mon mother from the family. When they took her mother, Jane was only seven. As a little girl, she instinctively began a walkabout in the woods and fields around her house in Hanover, Mass. Lifetimes of knowledge unfolded almost magically as she quickly learned to speak the language of animals, flowers, and trees. This is a natural ability we all have in our normal state of being. So 
I'm very, very excited that this is out. It's out of me too. I still have trauma. I still have PTSD. I still have nightmares and it's been almost 30 years, but I'm not dead. And that's what they wanted me. So this is not a story about me being a targeted individual, although this was one of the symptoms because again, targeting was too much to get into this. So that's going to be another book, but this was one of the byproducts and it is for many, many women taking children from mothers in the West is becoming epidemic. And part of it is to destabilize them, traumatize them, get them into foster care, get them into social services um, so that they can be used cradle to grave by judges, lawyers, um, some foster care. I know not all foster care is bad, but this is epidemic in our culture right now of traumatizing children because there's such a need um, for children to be trafficked because there's so many elites right now um, there always has been, but right now it is off the charge, the number of children that are disappearing. And if they can't get them off the streets and they can't go to foreign countries to get them, they're getting them through broken family court, broken families. But this is a, this is a story of, 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 of success. My, my children broke free and it took a long, long time and they're still healing, but they're all doing, all three of them are doing excellent. And we're very, very close. So this is a success story. A lot of children in, a lot, in Maine and around the world do not survive family courts as they stand right now. So um, yes, you can also get it through amazon.com. You can get it through me. Um, you can get a signed copy from me. And the best way to do that is to, and I'll put this in a link below, is to email me and I'll give you my... Um, you'll get my, my email address and return and to, to PayPal, pay, PayPal me. It's um, $24.95. I might be doing a spring sale soon. <clears throat> and um, so if you want a signed copy, you can, you can get it through me or you can get it through the pub publisher, trying day press or amazon.com goodreads Barnes and Noble. It, it's, it's in a lot of different places. And I, it's, it's women are just saying it's empowering. It's inspiring. I've seen women changing that, you know, on Facebook, I know women that have read it and they just seem to become very expressive. Now, like another thing people say when they read the books, I'm going to read a book. I'm, I'm going to write a book. It, it's empowering on a, a really deep, deep level. And um, so, you know, I couldn't be happier that this is out. I'm going to be doing more videos. I'm probably going to uh, talk about Di Princess Diana. Princess Diana went through the same thing I did um, with her mother. And um, I've, I'm writing a book about how that has affected her sons in England and basically the world. And it's much more, it's, it's deeper than that. It, it's, it's, you know, all of my writing goes, goes very, very deep. So I will be talking about Princess Diana. I will be talking about um, healing with shamanism and Reiki and crystals and how a lot of those things kept me alive. And also, you know, God, how God plays into all of that. And um, so thank you. I'm sorry it's been so long. I will put this, I believe, on YouTube. I have a new computer, a new old computer which did not have a microphone or a camera. So I've got a whole new setup and I also don't have my intro with the beautiful stags and I don't have my green screen, but I don't know. I kind of like just simple uh, videos myself with someone just talking. I don't, I, I really love narrative. So um, again, I will put a link. I'll put a link to my website. If you want to see some of the reviews, you can go to amazon.com and just put in their search bar, the land of broken crystals, and it'll come up and you can see the reviews. If you, if you buy a book and you love it, please leave me a review. That helps a lot. Um, and I'll put my email if you want to order through me and get a signed copy. So again, this book is, 
you know, a lot of people know me as a shaman. A lot of other people know me as a targeted individual. And I'm sure many other things. Um, but this, again, this, this, the targeting that began in Maine is going to be a whole nother book. But this is one of the things they did to me and my family. I, this was an attempt to get me to suicide myself so that they could traffic my daughters. I truly believe that. And um, there was many people involved that, were, that it was indicative. They were very, very corrupt and evil. And um, so uh, this is uh, involves a lot of shamanism. It's me recovering from domestic violence from court. And, in, you know, my family is in this book, uh, but they're not the focus. They were sort of the background in my life. Anyway, thank you so much and lots of love to everybody.